Uh, peace and blessings and a whole lot of love. Uh, today has been a seen interesting today. I woke up. I shoved some snow. It was only a little bit because my boyfriend is at work. My son is home and the other son is in New York. But it was only a little bit. So me and my 14-year-old just shoved a little snow that's outside. So I get this message from my strange husband telling me to send the papers. And then had the nerve to say, you full of shit. I'm going to do it myself. Now, nigga, why are you lying? You know damn well in 2015 of March you received a divorce petition and you chose not to sign it. Then in 2017, I went to go see me a lawyer to find out how to complete the divorce. And she tells me that I have to retain her, which is going to cost me $3,000 to do the paperwork over because they made an error in the divorce petition. And then if he don't sign, then that's going to cost extra money. So I just put it to the side because my mind right now is like, you don't have to be married to be happy. Just because someone's married doesn't mean they committed to you. So I'm in a healthy relationship. I love him and he loves me. And um, we're committed to one each other. So I just like threw the, 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 the divorce petition to the back to a later date. So I go onto my Instagram and I get this message from him. Telling me to send him, send me my papers. I'm full of shit. Like, you know damn well you got those papers in, in March of 2015. You didn't sign them. You told me you wasn't going to sign them because you shredded them. So now all of a sudden you coming to me. I guess because I be saying shit out of my mouth. Because I don't know how to keep my mouth closed. Because I'm going to always speak truth. Like, you's a deadbeat, you have community D, you's a liar, I think you know how this, whatever that word is. Maybe you're a sociopath or a psychopath, but something's definitely wrong with him because he's nothing but a compulsive liar, a habitual liar. Ain't going to say I never sent them, who he's trying to fool. I had the green postcard with your damn signature on it. Going to sit there and say I didn't send it to him, that I'm full of shit. So when I messaged him back and he left me on scene because he couldn't answer that. He couldn't. He had no comeback for what I sent him. You know damn well I sent you that divorce petition. Your ass refused to sign it. So you think I'm going to shut up? I'm going to always say some foul shit in my mouth because you's a foul ass Negro. I want to always say foul shit. Use community D. Use a deadbeat dad. You have too much feminine energy because you don't know how to stand up like a damn man. I had to go get me a glass of teleport to calm my goddamn name because I was about to go in because that's one thing I got to work on. <laughs> that's the one thing I got to work on. He, he, if he ever, whenever he come at me with some bullshit, I always got this tendency to recognize. Now, I ain't curse him out or anything, but I just spoke the truth. You know I sent you the divorce petition. And when I saw you, you told me what you did with it, that you was going to never sign it. So now, all of a sudden, you asking me to send you some papers. Now, I said, well, send me the $3,000 so I can retain that lawyer. So this way, if you pay for it, I know you ain't gonna, you're not going to contest it because I'm not paying for it. And you contest it, then that's more money that I got to spend. It doesn't make a difference whether I say married to you because I know the fuck I want to be with that. I have a man in my life that treats me well, so no kick rocks. Roll over and drop dead for all I care. Going to send me that bullshit. But anyway, I had to, had to go get me some um, teleport. I don't know if it's going to calm me down or make me more hype. But we'll soon find out. But anyway, then I was supposed to, after that happened, I was like, okay, let me go read. Because I'm trying to take my um, emergency emergency certification, certification in um, being a professional substitute teacher. So as I get older, when I want to start working, I can just substitute here and then and make that little extra money. So then I couldn't even concentrate to read so I could take the test for that. So I was like, well, let me just go find an article and read an article and maybe just do me a video. But yeah, you're going to sit there fucking lying, talking about I'm full of shit. You know, damn well I see. Who he sitting up there? He must be sitting up there next to a side chick or some shit. I don't know. We're going to sit there and say I ain't sending. You know, damn well you signed that and you received that thing and said you wasn't signing. Get Kiss my ass. Anyway, the title of this article is... Why won't he let go even when he doesn't want you? 
So the article goes on to start, life could be so simple if the man you like, love, crush, or would just stop playing games. Why is he so hot and cold? Why is he unwilling to fully commit? Why does he push you away only to pull you back in? Is he testing you? Is it your fault? Him, him, him. It's all you think about and it's driving you crazy. The truth bomb. Bam. The man you want doesn't actually want you. He can say that he loves you. Explain all the reasons why he needs more time or shift the blame to you as the reason he acts the way he does. But regardless of the detail, it doesn't change the fact that you are sinking in a boat known as relationship purgatory. The dark side of dating is that for every cute social media couple, there is even more messy situation couples who are trapped in one of the following. Now, let's see where you lie at in your relationship. The on and off again. Two people that are technically in a relationship are always going on break, then getting back together to the point where neither knows what they are anymore. Friends with benefits. Two people that have agreed to use each other for sex and or company with a loose agreement that neither wants something serious. Stale dating stage. Two people that are deep into the dating stage, but no one has brought up exclusivity. Therefore, both remain single, frustrated, and the person who wants to be in a real relationship. Unofficial, yet official. Two people that agree not to see anyone else and do everything their boyfriend and girlfriends do, yet keep the options for someone new open, but not commit into a label or a title. What category? Do you fall in? So it goes on to sit, read, For a few people in those relationships listed above are happy, they're content, and satisfied in a moment when they are with that person. But no woman wants to be in some half-assed relationship where she doesn't 100% know, 100% know what to label it. You're giving girlfriend benefits to a man who isn't even sure about you. You proud of that? You giving wife benefits to a guy who doesn't even return your calls. This the life you imagine. As you all know, I get an enormous amount of emails each week. A constant question is how can I get him to be like he used to? Or how can I tell him that I changed my mind and want a commitment? I bet the most Google question after the guy you're crazy over has yet to text back. Why won't he let me go if he doesn't want me and that's simply because you allow him to hang around because you really believe that someday he's going to want you just as much as you want him. You put a blind eye to all the red flags that they had given to you and you choose to ignore it in the hope that he'll come around one day and feel the same way about you that you feel about him. That's my opinion. So the article goes on to read, This could be us, but you're playing high. In a man's mind, there is no us. If he wants to be with you, he will make it happen. If he's planned, then he's telling you to read between the lines. He doesn't want to live a fairy tale with you. He just wants you to keep milk. He just want to keep. He just wants to keep milking the cow for free until a better version of you comes along. Common sense is, isn't so common when feelings get involved. No matter how smart you are, falling in love will make you do some basic ass things. Like hold on for too long and allow a man to waste the best years of your life. Today I'm going to talk about insight into the male's mind. I've written about the solution to this problem in my book, but sometimes it's not about what to do. It's about the why. When your heart is breaking, you don't want someone telling you to walk away. You just want to know why this man has changed. Is it you? Is it another woman? Is it him? There's no way to jump into the middle of all men and generalize, but I will try to shed light on the top reason I've seen her witness and even down myself. You lost your luster. Looks, personality, and attitude. The article goes on to read, if any of these things change in a man's mind while dating or in a relationship with you, he will lose interest quick. Let's backtrack and take you through each trait starting with looks. As men, we go for looks above or else. You know that. The thing 90% of women lose track is 
The thing 90% of women lose track of is that when we talk about looks, it isn't about being magazine, cover pretty. It's a wide net that encompasses a bunch of X factors with inspires lust. Men chase their fetishes. All any woman has to do to track a man is to have some trait that taps into a fetish. Which then inspires his lust. So most of the time niggas be lusting after us. He'll give chase and at that point you are in control while he's hypnotized and thinking with his dick or getting overly romantic. That's when you can fully win him over with your personality and attitude. Sounds easy, right? No, but it's not. Because most women don't understand male lust enough to use it against them. They see a cute boy chasing him, get excited, and give in to him without exercising power over his lust filled mind. For example, I once dated a girl who had these incredible breasts but an okay face. It was only at the sex that the lust dissipated, dissipated, and I realized that she wasn't at all what I wanted. Damn. My hormones fetishized her, and there was no real personality, personality trait that changed my mind to look past that. This is how men operate on a subconscious level. Other men may be more into a big butt, a certain skin tone, lip size, shit. I even have a friend who is obsessed with extremely muscular women. The point is, each man you meet will take a look at you and like you on the surface because no matter how you look, there's a fetish aspect that triggers him to chase you at first, that is. Wow. So the article goes on to continue reading. Personality and attitude are deeper than looks, but it all it can also be misleading. When you first meet met this guy, he saw you on your best behavior. On a date or during that first week of testing, you nobly act, saying all the right things, and having all those exciting new conversations where you talk about your past and future. Men aren't these tough creatures. We fall fast and get swept up in the idea of a woman we first meet because she's new and vibrant. The attitude you display matches this positive personality because you have no reason to get smart, be defensive, or raise your voice this early on. If you have above average time, then that first week or so you're going to come off like this perfect woman. You're being different from these basicers he's used to dating and he repays this by giving you his attention and affection to the point where it feels like you finally won that love. This is only the point where most of you were the happiest. It seemed to be going up, up, up. Then suddenly the wheels fall off. Why? The lust of war off on either your looks added to a personality. No matter how tight your vagina is, sex alone won't keep his attention after he had his fill. Being pretty eventually wears off and he goes from oh my god to oh it's her. If your personality gives way to a normal chit chat and redundant questions, he becomes bored. Losing your luster happens silently. He doesn't say anything, but you feel it, don't you? It drives you crazy that you can't read his mind to ask him why he's not reacting to you like he used to or why his energy level is dying out. But you don't need to read his mind to understand what's going on. When a man is inconsistent, isn't trying to move forward, or giving you bullshit reasons for why the relationship has selves, think about it. Looks, personality, and attitude. He most likely doesn't think you're pretty. It's worth it anymore. Why? The fetish has been satisfied. He has sex with you or got to the point where sex with you wasn't even something he wanted any longer. Because you stop turning him on. Next up is personality. In this case, he still wants you physically, but now that even gotten to know you. Now that he's even got to know you emotionally, he doesn't like the things you into or talk about. Finally, you have your attitude. He's no longer trying to make things official because your attitude is shitty. Maybe you do have an attitude problem that makes you annoying. But most likely it's him not being able to handle the real you. Now that you're comfortable around him, you stand up for yourself or argue points more than you did when you were in the honeymoon stages of the relationship. Remember that some men like the novelty of new women because it's funny and they can get away with things. 
Once you two bond and you start to speak your mind or make demands in terms of controlling or narcissistic men. Oh, let me read that part again. Once you two bond and you start to speak your mind and make demands, it turns off. Controlling and narcissistic. I don't even know. I, this word is hard to pronounce, y'all. N a r c i s s i s t i c. Narcissist men. He didn't sign up for a strong woman. He wanted the weak, nice, and submissive. So now that the lust is gone, he's waiting for the right time to ghost you or have a reason to cut ties. Peace, blessings, the whole lot of love. God is high to ya, and this was take it from far from your basic dot com. They changed the title of this website because it used to be called website because it used to be called Black Girls Are Easy. But when I clicked on it, this page is far from basic dot com. Some men are still hanging around because you refuse to cut him off, and he knows this. He knows he don't got to do much but dick you down, tell you what you want to hear, because you're not strong enough to know that you deserve better. And if you're a woman like me, and what I have experienced, when I started speaking my mind, and I started to make demands on an estranged husband, he ran away. He started calling me crazy. Because he can't take the truth. And he's the, what I've learned from him, he's the type of man that wants a woman who's not going to open up her mouth and say shit. He's the type of man that doesn't like conflict. He's the type of man, he can do whatever he wants to do, but as his woman or his wife or whoever, you're not supposed to speak your mind. Because if you do, he's going to call you crazy and he's going to run. Because he have yet to stand up to me. Every time I call him out, he back down. And that's the type of man I don't want. Because I don't want no man that's going to whoop my ass. But I want a man who takes accountability and who who takes accountability for his stuff. Who can be honest when he's wrong. And someone who can stand up to me. And I'm not no ghetto ass female. But I'm not going to sit back and allow you to do whatever you want to me. And not open up my mouth. If you're lying, I'm going to call you out on it. And that's the one thing he cannot take. Every time I call him out on some truth, I'm crazy. Well, I'll be crazy because I'll be crazy for a distance because you won't be disrespecting my ass. Peace. Call this idea. Gotta go, gotta go. Self-love is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Learn to love yourself because your happiness is dependent upon you and not someone outside of yourself. When you learn, to learn how to be happy and at peace by yourself, no one cannot come in your in your life and run games on you. But when you are desperate and thirsty and willing to accept anything just, be, just to say you got somebody, even if this person is mistreating you, you the stupid one. God is how the idea. Gotta go, gotta go.